Even though Tracy and the kids start out as enemies, they soon become friends and partners, saving each other from trouble that neither could ever face alone. Tracy, wait! Are you all right, kid? Yeah, I'm okay! Thanks for the tip. Who was it, Tracy? I don't know, kid. I don't know who's got it! They're just trying to scare us. In real life, the kid is Charlie Cosmo, an 11-year-old sixth grader from Minneapolis, handpicked by Warren Beatty to play the part. Charlie Cosmo is an unusually intelligent guy. He has a built-in sense of, of what's nice. phony and what's not, and um, that was good enough for me. Okay, cut. That looks good, Charlie. Come here. Dick Tracy is every kid actor's dream come true, the ultimate game of let's pretend. Well, the kid is an orphan that uh, Dick Tracy finds on the streets, and uh, he's like this tough kid, you know what I mean? And uh, he's always hopping on the back of the police cars when Tracy doesn't want him to follow him everywhere, so I'm always jumping on the back of police cars and following them. For most youngsters, making Dick Tracy might have been a little bit scary. But Charlie Cosmo's the kind of kid who takes everything in stride, even to the point of working on his curveball between takes. Completely at ease, even around grown-up movie veterans like cinematographer Vittorio Storaro and Warren Beatty. Charlie, I'll make it remember when we were doing the scene, and I asked you to invent a line, and you said you didn't like the line. What was your substitute line? As God is my witness, I shall never go hungry again. <laughs> Very good. Is that a fun, that Charlie Corsmo? He would say to me, loosen up, loosen up. <laughs> You're all right, kid. Tracy, why are we going to the roof? I don't know. Seems like a good place to hide. Dick Tracy is always up to his hat in trouble, but the movie never loses its sense of humor. But Tracy, if you were not in the street every night risking your neck, you could have a wife. I mean, a life. I like to do this a lot. Behind the scenes, that same feeling of fun was equally obvious. This is the head table, and your host for the evening is Mr. Big Boy Caprice. Whether it was a room full of extras going along with a gag, or the way Madonna reacted to Paul Sorvino slurping up oysters in rehearsal, laughter came easy and often in between takes. Cut! The Oyster King! Many of the movie's warmest, most touching moments came from Tracy's long-running romance with Tess Trueheart. Somehow, they're always at a loss for words when the conversation turns to the topic of settling down. Well, don't you think that since we have so much in common, it might be a good idea if we just went ahead and... Yes? Uh... Here's what I think about Dick Tracy and Tess Trueheart. They've been involved for quite a long time. They're very honest with each other, but it's a little bit of a plunge to get married. The supreme test of Tracy's faithfulness comes when breathless Mahoney slinks onto the scene with orders from Big Boy Caprice to bring the great detective down any way she can. Aren't you gonna frisk me? Madonna, she's currently setting trends with Vogue, her newest number one hit. Now, Madonna is breathless. I chose to do Dick Tracy because I love the character of Breathless Mahoney and no one else could play her part but me. I know how you feel. You don't know if you want to hit me or kiss me. I get a lot of that. Breathless wears a lot of tight dresses. Those are her redeeming qualities. <laughs> Um, I, I have to say that I think I've had more fittings than I have shooting days for this movie. Breathless is every good guy's idea of bad, raising pulse rates whenever she sings at Gangland's favorite hangout, Club Ritz. I'm gonna love you like nothing I'm gonna love you when you're all alone. Breathless was a double challenge for Madonna playing a major character in Dick Tracy, while mastering three new songs by Broadway's legendary Tony-winning composer, Stephen Sondheim. 
They were very difficult songs to learn, and they were incredible songs. And um, it was a great learning experience, because when I first heard them, I just said, I can't sing those kind of songs. Stephen was very, very um, helpful and generous, and he gave me a lot of encouragement. Five, six, seven, and... Under the watchful eye of Warren Beatty, Madonna rehearsed as long and hard as she ever had for any world tour or music video. On this day, camping it up in a chorus girl parody called More. For Warren Beatty and his talented team of movie makers, Dick Tracy represents a half decade of creative effort endless logistics and innovative problem solving all that to bring chester gould's legendary comic strip world to life and in the process advancing the art of telling stories on film i think they have designed something that is completely and utterly unique and original and that's the thing that you can do in movies dick tracy makes me nostalgic it makes me think about when i was a kid everything was very clear in dick tracy what was good was clear, what was bad was clear. Dick Tracy's good. He's straightforward, he's honest, tough, and I like him. Make sure your eyeglasses are off once again, please, and modern day wristwatchers. What are you doing up there? I'll tell you. I'm moved by this, let's shoot it. So what do you want to do now? As a kid, everybody wanted to be flat top. I'm a little flat top dog. Every actor should be so lucky in their career to work on a movie like this. When you come on this set, you feel alive. Five, six, seven, and. Hey, Warren, what's your favorite thing about Dick Tracy? Well, I want to talk to you about that. What about Dick Tracy? I'm on my way.